Native gardens can be so beautiful. They're not the limited palette that you might have been thinking. And to prove that to you, today I am visiting in this gorgeous hillside garden tucked behind a house in Nashville. Well, I want to start here in this beautiful area where we have purples and blues and some yellows. And we have Donnie Bryan here, who is quite the native plant aficionado. So tell me about this beautiful plant, Donnie. This is Hori Vervain. It's in the Verbena family and it blooms from the bottom up, so it has quite a bit more time to go. I've seen the hummingbirds on it. The bees love it. They love it. And this is um, uh, na native petunia. It's a, the prairie petunia. I also have a, the Carolina petunia that's up in the woods, so two varieties of that. On the, the trellis and tower there is our passion vine, which is one of the native state flowers of Tennessee. I love getting that started and it's already fruiting, I see. And then on down is the section of partridge peas. And I love this plant because it blooms for so long. It's been blooming now for about five weeks and it's always full of bees. And I also see the butterflies and hummingbirds all around it. So these are some of the pollinator favorites here. And then there's this lovely guy. Oh yes, this is slender dayflower and it's also called white mouth dayflower. And it shouldn't ever be confused with the look-alike called Asiatic dayflower, which has a different leaf placement and a, less, a little bit less significant flower. Donnie, you have this beautiful hyssop here, and I know it's not native, so explain to me how it fits into your garden vision. Okay, yes, Anna's hyssop is a native plant, it's not native to Tennessee, but it's used in a lot of pollinator gardens because it, it's so loved by bees, hummingbirds, and butterflies. They all really like anise hyssop. And then making a really nice uh, color combination here, you've got these different cone flowers. Yes, the taller is yellow coneflower, also called gray-headed coneflower, because when it first comes in, the center of it is a, is a gray, a light gray color, and it finally goes dark. And then lower down front is the Missouri coneflower, and the Missouri coneflower is new to me this year. This sort of floppy bush with the tiny little blooms, I love it. Yes, this is the American beautyberry bush, and I love this when everything is gone dormant and leaves are all gone and flowers are gone. There's a spray of red violet berries that looks like a fireworks exploded, and of course the birds enjoy those until they're gone. Well, this has got to be a bird favorite. I love it. It's one of my favorites. This is a cardinal flower. It's also called red lobelia. Hummers love it because it's a tubular flower and the bees love it and the butterflies love it. So it's a win, win, win. So I love all the ferns up here in the woods. And this is a Christmas fern? It's a Christmas fern. It's called a Christmas fern because it's still pretty and green and lush around Christmas time. So it, it pretty much stays green most of the winter. Mine came from um, Monticello. Well, it's absolutely gorgeous. And then explain about this part that's turning brown. Oh yes, it's the spores. That's the way it uh, reproduces and they're on the back of, of the fern. And so that, that's what's happening here. It's a uh, seeding. And then after these spread, this is going to come on out a little more. I just love the look, the texture, and the feel of this plant. Yes, I love it. This is um, river oats. Uh, some people call it inland oats. And um, it's a native sea oats that comes back every year. It spreads rapidly and it's good for places where things, other things don't do as well. It'll grow in the sun or in the shade. It's, it's not picky about that. And it is fairly deer resistant. 
Yes, yes, it is. And this looks really pretty in dried arrangements when it does dry out. I've hung some of them up and used them in the fall to decorate. Not all of us have such an amazing backyard area, but we all have little pockets here and there. And you've got this beautiful little pollinator garden right on the street. Yes, it doesn't take a large space. Um, any small space will do. I mean, here I've been able to offer up milkweed. This is swamp milkweed. And this is more of the yellow cone flowers. And I have butterfly weed. This is my first year not to have monarchs, but I haven't given up. They came very late last year. And then this is blanket flower. That's a prairie plant that is probably in the lower 48 states now because it, it ends up in a lot of wildflower seeds. What you have done here, Donnie, I know has been such a pleasure to you and to everybody who sees it. Yes, it's been very rewarding. I um, follow the motto of the Wild Ones group that says, uh, healing the earth one yard at a time. Wow. Well, know what? All of us can have these kind of wonderful experiences like Donnie does every day. We can have butterflies and bees and birds and other little wildlife running through our gardens. It's just a matter of picking out the kind of things that they want as well as the kind of things you want. And you too can have a beautiful wildlife paradise. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.